YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video and John Harbaugh just had a presser and boy he looked dejected he looked exhausted um and I know they did just come from playing a primetime game but I don't even think that was the only I think it's just the way that the game went and the stress of the game because imagine like we as fans well, a lot of us we stress over these Ravens games. So just imagine the people that are actually playing, the people that are actually coaching, the people that are actually directly involved in the game, all the stress that they go through. So I understood why John Harbaugh's face was looking the way that it was looking. Um, and also, when you got to be, you got to deliver the bad news. Because, of course, in order to deliver the bad news, you got to receive the bad news. And they received the bad news on Marcus Williams, um, and he delivered it. And again, it was just pretty much confirming what what uh he said last night, um, cause last night he let it be known, and we talked about this in the post game thoughts video, um, but John Harbaugh let it be known last night, like Marcus Williams is going to miss significant time, and again with the way that Harbaugh speaks about injuries, for him to say something so direct like that, that's how you know it's extremely bad, it's extremely bad, um, but. There is a, a silver lining with the whole thing. Uh, so they will be putting Marcus Williams on injury reserve. They're going to put him on IR. Uh, so he'll have to miss at least the next three games. Or is it four games? I forget. Uh, but I would expect him to miss more. But they did say that it's not season ending. It's not a season ending injury. So how long he's out for? Who knows? Who knows? Um, hopefully it's not too long, but I mean, with Marcus Williams, that's a playmaker. That's a playmaker. So uh, the longer he's out, I mean, you, you're going to miss him. But at the same time, you hope that in his absence, guys will step up. I mean, <laughs> they got no choice but to, right? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, Marcus Williams is certainly going to be missed. He, again, first, first year with the Ravens, uh, the impact has been huge. It's been huge in a positive way. Um, Harbaugh talked about how he thinks uh, Marcus Williams hurt his wrist on uh, one of the first one of the first two series. Um, he said he wasn't sure exactly which play, but I mean, not that it really matters, but because he's out now. Uh, but it's it's just it's just unfortunate, man. And then you feel for him, a young guy entering his prime. Um, and he was just looking to prove, prove himself. Like, hey, yeah, 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 I, I can get this thing done. I did my thing with the Saints. With the, with the Saints, it was kind of up and down. Uh, but he was like, all right, I'm getting an opportunity with the Ravens. And it was paying off. His play was paying off for the Ravens and for him in a big way. Uh, but now they got to put that on hold. So what's next? What's next for these Baltimore Ravens in the free safety position, that Roman safety position? What's it going to be? Um, if we, If this would have been going into week one and even well if it, it was before the season started and you told me all right we the, the roster is pretty much set uh if you told me like all right in week five Marcus Williams is going to be hurt again this is before the season started if you told me week five Marcus Williams is going to be hurt he's going to miss a chunk of time huge amount of time I'd have been like oh okay that's what they drafted Kyle Hamilton for the rookie rookie you're up 14th overall pick number 14 hey you're up it's your time but it, it really doesn't seem like it's going to be that way. Um, because, I mean, to tell them from last night, they went straight to Geno Stone. And Geno Stone is not a bad player by any means. Um, and, and it seems like it's with, with Geno Stone. Geno Stone just ready, man. Geno Stone is the definition of stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Harbaugh talked about it in the press just a little bit, a little bit ago. Um, how he said Geno Stone, he always knows the playbook. He always knows the defensive plays and whatnot. And he doesn't expect to play, but... He's prepared just in case he has to. And it showed last night, and it, show, it showed last year as well when he had to step in. I remember uh, Chuck Clark, when the Ravens were playing hot potato with COVID, um, Chuck Clark was out. So everybody was like, man, who's going to wear the green dot? And it ended up being Geno Stone. So, hey, <laughs> Chuck Clark better hold on to that green dot tight, baby, because, hey, Geno Stone ready to take it over. Um, but no, nah, Geno Stone, I expect him to do well, man. I, I really do. I expect him to do a good job. And I'm not just saying that because I hope he does good, but no, I, I expect him to step in and do good because he's done it before. 
It's not like they're throwing him in. Ah, excuse me, they're throwing him into the fire, and it's like, oh man, I've never been here before. I've never experienced this before. What, what am I gonna do? I ain't expecting him to be Marcus Williams, but I expect him to be Geno Stone, somebody that can come in, make tackles, make plays as well, and do his thing. So while there could be some drop off uh, from Marcus Williams to Geno Stone, I think the safety play will still be good. Um, but with Kyle Hamilton, his usage has just been, it's been really like weird to me, man. It's been really weird to me um, because, again, this is a number 14 overall pick, like your first round draft pick. You are a pretty defensive team, I would say, um, and you got a first round pick that uh, he just doesn't give me that, he doesn't get that much playing time. And see, the, the the thing that's even more confusing about it is they drafted him after um, they had already signed Marcus Williams, obviously kept Chuck Clark, brought back Geno Stone, still had Brandon Stevens, or Darius Washington was still around. They brought him, they, they drafted him after the fact that they had a bunch of safeties already. Um, so I'm just, I, I just, I've just been confused on his usage, his limited usage, because y'all know me. I had said it all off season. Once they drafted him, oh yeah, he's gonna be out there a lot. He is going to be out there a whole lot. First round pick and a defensive player? Oh yeah. For the Ravens? Oh yeah. He's gonna be out there a lot. No. But no. Um so we'll see how things uh progress as the season goes along. And it, it could just be one of those things. They just easing them in. They don't want to rush anything. But again at the same time Normally, with first round pick, it's like boom. All right, you're up. Especially if, even with the quarterback position. But even a lot of times, with other, other than the quarterback position, usually first round pick. Oh yeah, you you in there right away. With the running back, wide receiver, tight end, uh, offensive lineman, defensive lineman, cornerback, safety, linebacker, all that stuff. Usually you will insert it right away. But Ravens are like, oh no 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 no. And Kyle Hamilton, he was a luxury pick. He was a luxury pick. Um, so, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what they do. I know a lot of people have questioned, like, man, and been thinking about it, especially with the, the lack of usage of Kyle Hamilton. They've been thinking, like, man, Ravens could have, they could have went so many different other ways when it came to the draft uh, and got somebody that they would be using a lot more. But um, that's the past. That's over with. The draft been over with for a long time now. Um, and, maybe, hey, they could have. But since they went with Kyle Hamilton, it's like, all right, to get this guy on the field. Let's use him. Let, let, let's really put him out there. And you know what's crazy? The the Ravens um with uh Brandon Stevens. Because I was just I was talking to my guy JT a little bit ago. And I was telling him, I, was, I ain't really see Brandon Stevens like that. We said it in the post game thoughts video, I ain't really see Brandon Stevens like that. But I did see Pepe. Uh so then I looked at the um the chart, the uh snap count chart, and it said that Brandon Stevens played like 15 snaps. And Pepe played like uh, I think forty five or forty six, something like that. I was like, "Whoa, okay, okay." Like they they got the rookie out there. They really had him out there, and I, I knew I saw him a lot, but I didn't realize I saw him that much and that much more than Brandon Stevens. So they had him out there, but of course he he had help around him too, because he had a, a Marlon Humphrey, a Marcus Peters on the outside. And then, of course, the safety is helping out to Marcus Williams for a little bit, but Chuck Clark and Geno Stone, so he had help. But then you think about with Kyle Hamilton, if you put him out there, he's going to have help too. They're going to be one-on-one -on -one situations that he gets put in, like how he was with, matched up with Hayden Hurst, and he did a good job. I thought it was a terrible call about the passing. I thought that was a terrible call. Terrible call. And that whole drive just featured terrible call after terrible call after terrible call, but I, I was just so impressed that the Ravens' defense – Actually, they held up. They held up all through fourth down because I, I, like I told y'all, I, I just expected them to give up a touchdown. Like you give up three, and not not only you give up three calls, but there are three bad calls, three terrible calls that go against you. And then the Bengals offense is right there on the goal line. Like, all right, I, I can't be mad at you if you don't hold them out of the end zone. I, I expect you them to get in there, but no, they held their own and they stopped them. And again, Bengals did get super cute with the end around and the uh, that just that's just silly, man. That was silly. But shout out to Marcus Peters for being all over that. But anyway, um, 
But yeah, like, like they did with uh with the Marion Williams with Pepe, with Kyle Hamilton. I mean, I would have expected a lot of the same stuff, but we just haven't seen him too much. So again, we'll see how the season goes. Now, um, he, I would expect him to be out there a little more, a little more, but probably not too much more because. While initially I'd be like, all right, uh, Marcus Williams is out, so everybody on the depth chart, they move up. But uh, it seems as if Marcus Williams being out, Geno Stone leapfrogged Marcus Williams. I mean, excuse me, leapfrogged Kyle Hamilton. And now he's that guy starting at free safety, and Kyle Hamilton is still exactly where he was before. So, again, it's just one of those things. We'll wait, see how it goes, see what happens. Um... But it's going to be interesting to see the Ravens' usage of not only Kyle Hamilton, but the rest of their safeties uh, as well. Um, so, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, again, injuries change everything. Uh, injuries are terrible. They are uh, the worst part about football. Like we always say, hate them. Um, but, again, Ravens, they, they got to get right back to it. Uh, with that saying, next man up. Next man up. And it is a saying that, me, I can't speak for all Ravens fans, but I know I, I am tired of hearing that saying because that saying comes with injuries and significant injuries, too. Um, but Ravens got to deal with it. Just like everybody else in the league, they got to deal with the injuries. Ravens certainly got to deal with injuries. Sometimes it seems like they deal with injuries a little bit more than everybody else, but who knows? But anyway, love y'all, team. Keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. And just like Marcus Williams is for who knows how long, we out.